Welcome to Fish Talk Hunt Radio with John Hennigan, where we're going to cast and blast you right out of this world with some of the best hunting and fishing stories that you can't even imagine. This is John Hennigan, and we have our host Frank Selby, and we are listening to Fish Hunt Talk. Um, Frank, uh, we had some fun people coming on this week. Last week was yeah. unusual. We uh, spent the entire show talking about wild pigs and pig hunting. Was, yeah. I never done it, but I developed an interest in it. Did some research on it, and it's very interesting. There's uh, an article the other day about mid Texas, which seems to be the focal point. This guy is very proud of his manicured lawn. Six times in one week, the pigs came in and completely destroyed it. Um, and this is not uncommon. So, no, it's not. And, uh, you know, I've found out a lot, you know, the the meat from um, the wild pig. Well, we're going to talk to somebody about it, so we'll save that. Um, yeah, next week we will. No, today, don't we have somebody coming on? No. Anyway, we'll cover it. We'll stay tuned. And I'd like to um, get everybody interested, and we're starting to plan trips for next year. Uh, So drop us an email. And if there's some place that you would like to go, we do hosted trips, but they don't have to be hosted trips. We can set you up with whatever you want. But... Hosted trips are easy, no problem. Everything's taken care of for you. Everything's set up, uh, all your meals, your transportation. And uh, normally, at a price less than you can normally get them for. Yeah, you know, the only place that we haven't ever had anybody on that's done it, and I'm going to have to check around, Mongolia. What? In Mongolia, fishing Mongolia. Yeah. Well, that, that's the right. You never have. I never thought about it. in the world. Wow. Well, listen, we got to make, make some plans to go to Mongolia, but right now we're going to make some plans to take a commercial break and then come back with Josh Ward. He's with Shakespeare Rods, so you guys stay there. It's time for you to take a real fun adventure. Join a hosted fishing adventure to Alaska or Baja with the staff of Fish Talk Radio. Real Fun Adventures can book you on any adventure you desire. Bring your fishing friends or meet new ones. Fish Talk Radio gets the best deals from our sponsors to give you the best possible price. Real Fun Trips are inclusive, easy, no-worry packages to the most popular fish grounds. Trips start around $600. Go to reelfunadventures.com. If you are still using a plastic hard shell cooler, things have changed for the better. AO coolers are lighter with twice the efficiency of the traditional bulky coolers. AO coolers are the best available soft-sided cooler with three-quarter inch high-density closed cell foam insulation. They will keep ice frozen for 24 hours in hot weather. Easy to carry, less space, it fits product inside for better performance. Go to aocoolers.com to order or find a retailer available at West Marine. We have something new and exciting for all fishermen and fisherwomen, from 5 to 12 year old boys and girls to teenagers and adults. Join the Unreal Fish Sales Fresh and Saltwater Fishing Club to get an amazing 50% discount on all Unreal rods and reels, 40% discount on all apparel, and 30% discount on all Unreal mounts. This monthly Fresh and Saltwater video contest has a cash prize up to $2,500. Members who join our Unreal Fish Sales Club Anytime this holiday season, we'll receive a free Unreal Fishtails shirt or hat of their choice. Go to our website at unrealfishtails.com to join. It's Unreal. Fish have tails. Do you have an Unreal Fishtail to share? Unreal Fishtails wants to post it. Go to unrealfishtails.com. Real is spelled with a double E. Join the club and win big money with your short videos. No matter what, you win with half price on all quality reels and rods. Plus, huge discounts and accessories. Perfect gift for anglers. Check out the website now 
at unrealfishtails.com. A full service fly shop, his and her fly fishing, offers FFI certified international fly fishing instructor and guide service with Frank Selby. Listen to Frank as host of fishhunttalkradio.com or listen live Saturdays on Sirius XM Radio Channel 211. Custom flies are handmade to, to your order in house in Newport Beach. Fishing in Mexico, Belize, Florida, or the Rockies, Frank and the staff will deliver exactly what you need. Flies and gear. Google his and her fly fishing. Vagabundos Dumoir Boat and Travel Club has 42 years experience introducing RVers to the joys of Mexico. Specializing in Baja, Vagabundos leads caravans and sponsors fishing tournaments, trailer boat cruises, and weekend getaways in Mexico and the West. Vagabundos Delmar also saves its 10,000 members tons of money on low-cost auto insurance. Stay up to date on Mexican travel with the printed newsletter online at V-A-G-A-B-U-N-D-O-S dot com or call 800-474-BAHA. Welcome back to Fish Talk Hunt Radio with John Hennigan. This is John Hennigan, and of course we have our host Frank Selby, and we have a very special guest, um, Josh. He's uh, well, you director of um, media for Shakespeare. I am the associate director of media of PR and media relations for Gunpowder Inc., and we are the oh PR yeah, that's right, for- yeah. Or pure fishing, and, uh, the pure fishing brand. We've, we've had some other uh, people from Gunpowder. I'm trying to remember what their product was, but it's uh, yeah. Amazing. We've but got anyway, a lot of clients in the fishing uh, space. Uh, we have you're, you're, you're the guy. You know what you're doing. You talk to the people. You're the answer man. You're not a technician, but you know the company. And if you don't mind, I'd just I'd like to mention a couple of things before we get started, Josh. Okay. Many years ago, when I started getting more interested in fishing, probably in my oh, mid twenties or so, um, one of my first rods was an ugly stick. I loved that thing, and I would describe it as a mid price, um, very good value, very good quality, and I could throw a uh, a scampi, you know. 30, 40 feet further than anybody else was throwing them. And uh, I think it had a little ambassador reel on it. But uh, uh, they work. They last forever. You know, they're not uh, real techie. Uh, They just, you know, why mess with it? It's perfect. It's the way it is. I, I have a question for him real quick, John. What all different areas are you in now? As the, the ugly stick brand, you mean? Yeah, all, all the different ones. Just all the different brands? Or off. Frank, I'm so, sorry. Uh, to make sure that you understand. What are all the different brands they represent? Or yeah. I'm not sure I'm going to understand the question. Yes, that's exactly what some of oh, the brands God. that he represents. I'll, oh, I'll, I'll let Josh okay. answer that because it's mind blowing. It it is uh, quite well, a long list, and I will admit that um, I've you know I've been fortunate enough to work with Pure Fishing for for a number of years with a couple of different companies, and and uh, I still have to have a cheat sheet because uh, we have so many great brands. I don't want to leave any of them out. So we have uh, Abu Garcia. All Star, Berkeley, Fenwick, Finnor, Grays, Hardy, Hodgman, Johnson, Mitchell, Hen, Luger, The Beal, Shakespeare, Spiderwire, Strin, Ugly Stick, and Van Stahl. And I understand Boy, you're coming up with some. My use, use. <laughs> And you're coming out with hooks also. Uh, yes. But I was talking to somebody. I don't remember exactly who it was from Pure Fishing. And I made the comment. I said, man, you guys must control about half of the world market, the world market in fishing gear. And he goes, yeah, conservatively speaking, I'd be right. 
So, and it is yeah. incredible. And everything I, that I they, they've they taken a lot of smaller companies um, that have been around for a long time and put their expertise and pumped up the quality. And, you know, they're mentioned. One example, pen reels, which is one that you guys own. Uh, mm-hmm. And that used to be the old standard. Uh, with two, three screws, and in about three minutes, you could change out the drag washers. And the drag washers, every tackle shop had them. Mm-hmm. And they were virtually indestructible, last for years and years, and they worked just perfect. And there was a period of time when they decided to get, you know, a little more checky. And I think their quality was what they used to be. And then when Pure Fishing brought her out, they're one of the best reels on the market now. Yeah, the pin is uh, pin is the you know the household name on, on saltwater. Uh, you know they're built yeah. and designed to to just to dominate that market. And I've been fortunate enough, as you guys have, to to be on some great fishing boats all over the world, and they all have something in common, and that's that's pin reels, and they're lined up there like soldiers on the back of the boat and ready to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So some of the new innovations on some of the products that you would like to talk about, what's your favorite? Well, not your favorite, but one of your favorite. Well, you know, one of the things, uh, you know, John and I talked the other day about ugly stick and, you know, there's a great affinity for ugly stick across fishing. I have it as well. I mean, like, some of my best fishing memories in the last decade or so have been catching just giant blue cats up at my uh, in-laws' place on Grand Lake in Oklahoma, and we do it with it because these these blues are big and they and they're mean and they just don't want to be caught, and we we can't we can't hurt those rods. I mean they they've caught a lot of big fish. We don't have any issues with them. They they are sensitive enough. They're stout. Uh, they've been stepped on a few times on the boat docks, uh, but they're still going. The ugly stick has taken that same legacy for uh, durability and getting anglers what they need. Times that's what ugly stick is about. Let's go fishing. Let's go. Let's go catch something, whether it's salt water, fresh water, wherever. And we've taken that same that same mentality of durability and have a good time and expanded it now to tools which came out uh, this past summer, a line of ugly tools. And also now into reels. We've got a new line of ugly, tough reels, uh, both spinning reels and spin cast reels, and at very, very accessible price points. And they're pretty built. I mean, I, I haven't seen a spin cast reel built to this uh, degree, uh, this kind of quality and durability, maybe ever. I mean, it's it's... Really right. a sturdy. Uh, it it definitely gosh. deserves to wear that ugly stick name. I, I want to interrupt you for a second. Sure. We had it scheduled for a ten minute segment, but yeah. after thinking about it and working on it, we'd like to hold you over for another five minutes. Uh, do you have time that's to fair. do that? Yeah, that's fine. You you want me okay. to bore you with some fishing stories, or how do you want to do it? Well, we're just going to keep. We got a lot to talk about. <laughs> but okay. uh, talking about Shakespeare rods. Price point, you're probably looking what between fifty and a hundred bucks. Yeah, for, it depends on the rod. I mean, you, you'll find some entry level uh, freshwater gear at some of your big box retailers. It'll be you know even more accessible than that as far as price point goes. Um, you know, when you get up to some of the saltwater, some of the ugly stick saltwater gear, you're going to be closer to a hundred dollars. Um, but you still get that same durability throughout that entire price point. It's just going to be you know, maybe some different features uh, here and there, and the size, of, you know, the size of the the rod that you're buying. Well, my but, point you know, is, you don't have to spend three hundred bucks to get a quality rod. You know, if you want to really, you know, get a fancy looking one, and and you're into those different things, fine. You know, because if you buy a good one, it'll last for generations. But uh, yeah. if you want something that works and lasts forever. You know, I'm, I love Shakespeare. I got a question. If I want, do you guys have an all-purpose website, or do you have a bunch of different ones? So uh, purefishing.com 
is uh, kind of the, I guess you'd say a hub, uh, but each brand has their own website. So, uh, for instance, um, let's see, Berkeley, for instance, is uh, berkeleyfishing.com. Uh, pen is pen fishing. Uh, but if you go, say, like to Ugly Stick, uglystick.com, it'll take you to uh, the Ugly Stick page, and you can look at all the new products, including uh, the Ugly Tools and the Ugly Tough Reels and all the rods. Uh, Josh, would you mind? Uh, because you told me a story about how, where, and when Ugly Stick started. So Ugly Stick... Uh, well, hang on, guys. Hang on just started. a second. We're, we're going to have to take a quick break, but we will come back with that story. And we're talking to Josh Ward, and, uh, boy, we've got some interesting stuff to talk about. So please stay with us. Thanks, dude. The East Cape of Baja, Mexico is world famous for sport fishing. Dorado, tuna, wahoo, marlin, sailfish, roosterfish, and parco. The Van Wormer Resorts make dreams come true at a price all can afford. Hotel Palmas de Cortez, Playa del Sol, and Hotel Punta Colorado have the biggest and best sport fishing fleet in all of Mexico. Call toll-free to 777-777-TUNA to find out how affordable world-class fishing can be. The best resorts and the best boats in East Cape. Call 877-777-TUNA. Vagabundos del Mar Boat and Travel Club has 42 years experience introducing RVers to the joys of Mexico. Specializing in Baja, Vagabundos leads caravans and sponsors fishing tournaments, trailer boat cruises, and weekend getaways in Mexico and the West. Vagabundos del Mar also saves its 10,000 members tons of money on low-cost auto insurance. Stay up to date on Mexican travel with the printed newsletter online at V-A-G-A-B-U-N-D-O-S dot com or call 800-474-BAJA. We have something new and exciting for all fishermen and fisherwomen, from 5 to 12-year-old boys and girls to teenagers and adults. Join the Unreal Fish Tales Fresh and Saltwater Fishing Club to get an amazing 50% discount on all Unreal rods and reels, 40% discount on all apparel, and 30% discount on all Unreal mounts. This monthly Fresh and Saltwater video contest has a cash prize up to $2,500. Members who join our Unreal Fish Tales Club any time this holiday season, we'll receive a free Unreal Fishtails shirt or hat of their choice. Go to our website at unrealfishtails.com to join. It's Unreal. Fish have tails. Do you have an Unreal Fishtail to share? Unreal Fishtails wants to post it. Go to unrealfishtails.com. Real is spelled with a double E. Join the club and win big money with your short videos. No matter what, you win with half price on all quality reels and rods. Plus, huge discounts and accessories. Perfect gift for anglers. Check out the website now at unrealfishtails.com. A full-service fly shop, his and her fly fishing, offers FFI certified international fly fishing instructor and guide service with Frank Selby. Listen to Frank as host of fishhunttalkradio.com or listen live Saturdays on Sirius XM Radio Channel 211. Custom flies are handmade to, to your order in-house in Newport Beach. Fishing in Mexico, Belize, Florida, or the Rockies, Frank and the staff will deliver exactly what you need. Flies and gear. Google his and her fly fishing. It's time for you to take a real fun adventure. Join a hosted fishing adventure to Alaska or Baja with the staff of Fish Talk Radio. Real Fun Adventures can book you on any adventure you desire. Bring your fishing friends or meet new ones. Fish Talk Radio gets the best deals from our sponsors to give you the best possible price. Real Fun Trips are inclusive, easy, no-worry packages to the most popular fish grounds. Trips start around $600. Go to reelfunadventures.com. Welcome back to Fish Talk Hunt Radio with John Hennigan. And, of course, our host, Frank Selby, uh, the premier uh, fly fishing angler. And we have a very special guest, um, Josh 
Yeah, so, you know, there's a company called, uh, you know, we all know it now as Shakespeare, but it started out as the William Shakespeare Jr. Company. Uh, it was founded in Kalamazoo, Michigan, if you can believe this, 1897. So it's been around a long time. Uh, so the, eventually that company's name was shortened just to Shakespeare. Uh, and then in 1976, I believe it was, so it predates me by a couple of years. Uh, but in 1976, they began to produce ugly stick rods. Uh, and everybody saw how durable they were, and uh, to your point, how they could cast farther with them. They could, uh, you know, if they accidentally stepped on them or abused them in Drove some way, they over them with a the truck. Yes, doing that on purpose, but it has happened. It had, they have been shutting car doors, uh, and you know, you you might remember the old ad where they kind of well, garage up on the. The, 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 the company's eighteen. What was it? Eighteen ninety-seven. Yeah, that's when Shakespeare. Yeah, eighteen ninety-seven. Yeah. And then the, the 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 brand started in 1976. Yeah, that's when that's when the ugly stick rods started to be made. Okay, go ahead, Frank. You got some more questions. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the uh, there's a couple of questions. The pin reels now are coming back into their own again. So would that be a great reel to put on the ugly stick? Oh, absolutely. In fact, there are uh, several combos that you can buy uh, with it that feature an ugly stick rod and a pin reel. Well, that sounded better by the minute. Now, yeah. what's your favorite rod to use when you go fishing? Well, it depends on what I'm fishing for. Let's say fresh water that you're back there. Well, let's see here. Fresh water, and, and and even now, even that can get uh, can vary because there's all different kinds. You know, where I'm where I'm from, we do a lot of bass fishing. Obviously, uh, I like the crappie fish too. I like the catfish. Um, so it, it it runs again. I'm a, I've always been a big fan of Fenwick rods and Abu rods, uh, but for things like catfish, I really like uh, the ugly stick. I mean, like they're just they they've got the backbone. They're tough. You can't break them, uh, and they they just get the job done. I've 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 pulled some big fish up with uh, with the ugly stick rod for sure, and uh, just you know I'll always continue to use those, and they've done a great job for me. I was using them even before and you know, it was working for the brands. So uh, you know I'm a believer in them and have a lot of experience with them. So I'm I'm pretty partial to those. Yeah. Uh, so how often do you get out to Oklahoma and do catfishing? So I live uh, in central Oklahoma, and my in-laws live on Grand Lake, which is far north. Okay, Oklahoma. my buddy just moved there. Yeah, it's a great fishery. Uh, I mean, it's great bass fishing, great catfish. Uh, my father-in-law, luckily, he lives right there. So when we show up, we don't have to spend a half a day trying to find fish. He always knows where they are, which is really handy. Uh, so we uh, we get up there whenever we can. Got a pretty good system figured out for catching those big blue cats that like to hang out in the cove that they live on. Uh, we'll go catch some bluegill off the beds, uh, you know, with a little little spinning rod, and then we'll take some of those and and fillet them down and and uh, put a circle hook to them and basically make like kind of a bottom bouncer rig. Uh, I guess what you guys would use in saltwater, we probably call a bottom bouncer rig, uh, and we just them out there and it's really effective on those blues well john you have one more question for him uh well we're gonna have to wrap it up pretty quick but again the uh, uh pure fishing which is a name that few people have even heard of a response of probably more than half the fishing equipment sold in the world and a company like Shakespeare that's able to utilize their sister companies. Uh, it's like putting the pen reels on an ugly stick. That's a perfect combination. Both of them are time-tested and, and very durable, and they work. Well, I want to thank you for coming on. And would you give your website out one more time, please? Absolutely. Uh, so if you go to purefishing.com, 
It'll take you, uh, you know, obviously pure fishing is not, is not a consumer facing uh, brand, but that's kind of the overall umbrella. And, and that's the easiest place to find all the specific brand websites. And there's links to those uh, at, at purefishing.com. Uh, and then once you have uh, find the brand that you want on the, on the little top bar there, you just click on it, and it'll take you to the respective brand website. So Thank just you so much. What was that? It's just purefishing.com. Yes. Okay. okay. That's easy. Yep. Hey, Bill, you there? I am. I'm here. Okay. Uh, Josh, uh, we're going to uh, move over. You're more than welcome to hang in if you got some questions. Uh, but, well, I, uh, I'm going to have to get back. Uh, I'm going to have to get back to working here. But I, I really okay. appreciate you having me on. It's been a great time, and uh, hopefully, I can come back on sometime in the future. We can trust talk me. About we'll, stuff. we'll be in touch. Trust me. All right. Hey, Thank Bill, you so much, guys. First have, thing, have a great day. Get out your website. Um, yeah, my website for surf fishing is fish the surf.com so f-i-s-h-t-h-e-s-u-r-f.com and folks can go to that site and learn everything they'd probably ever want to know about surf fishing where to find fish at the beach the baits that we use the rigging all of that all based around spinning gear and uh, you also have a book out too don't you still I, I do, um, Surf Fishing, The Light Line Revolution. It's been out for, I think it's been about 12 years now, and we're going into another printing of it um, here in another month or so because we've already gone through 44,000 books. So it, it's a very popular book. A lot of folks like it because it just covers everything you need to know about really from Seattle to San Diego in surf fishing as far as the equipment that we use, the rigging, the baits, the different types of fish that you can catch, uh, where to find fish at the beach, what to look for, what the records are, all that type of information is in there. So it really covers everything from A to Z on surf fishing, and it makes it really easy for folks who are just starting out or people who already have experience to pick it up really quickly and have a great time at the beach. Yeah. Uh, the other thing you didn't mention, that book takes you way into Mexico, too, fishing the surf. Right, right. Now, now was that a question? I wasn't sure. Yes, that's a question. You, uh, I Actually, I have a friend. Uh, I told him about it at the show. He, wa he went over and that was quite about seven years ago. You actually signed the book for him, and I appreciated that. Oh, that's And great. he was asking <laughs> you about down in Mexico, and I told him that was probably the best conventional spinning outfit book he could buy for surf fishing. A absolutely, and of course, a lot of times surf fishing equipment, of course, will change by where you're fishing. So if we're up in, you know, Oregon, Washington, California, we have a lighter type of equipment we use. And then when we work our way down into Mexico and into Central and South America, we upgrade our equipment to make it bigger. But it, it's always great to meet folks. And, and what's funny is at the show, and I'm sure, Frank, you've had this experience too. This one fellow came up to me and he said, he said, do you mind signing my book? And I said, I'd love to. What, what's your name? And he, and he said, well, well I'm not going to give you my name. And, and I said, well, well, why not? And he said, because I can sell it for a lot more on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least he was honest. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That was funny. Well, Bill, me and you have known each other a lot of years, and I we always have fun times at the show. And I, I on the air, I always thank you for recommending my little sand crab pattern. I appreciate that. Well, you know, I, I appreciate it too, Frank. And I'll, I'll tell you why. A lot of people, you know, of course, in the surf, not only do lures work and flies work and live bait work, all of these different things work. And the question is, you know, how do you, what, what do you use and how do you present it? And there's no one person who's got the answer to everything. You know all the secrets about fly fishing 
in the surf, uh, uh, in lakes, in streams, all of that stuff. And that's really applicable, very, very much so, to surf fishing. So it's great to have a resource because people will come up to me and they'll say, hey, tell me about, you know, the Clouser minnow and what's the best colors and how do I rig it? And, and I'll say, you know, give go over here two aisles over and see Frank and he'll get you all straight. <laughs> hey, Bill, guys, hang on. We're going to take a break and we'll be coming right back with Bill Varney, fishthesurf.com. Don't go away. We have something new and exciting for all fishermen and fisherwomen, from 5 to 12 year old boys and girls to teenagers and adults. Join the Unreal Fish Sales Fresh and Saltwater Fishing Club to get an amazing 50% discount on all Unreal rods and reels, 40% discount on all apparel, and 30% discount on all Unreal mounts. This monthly Fresh and Saltwater video contest has a cash prize up to $2,500. Members who join our Unreal Fish Sales Club Anytime this holiday season, we'll receive a free Unreal Fishtails shirt or hat of their choice. Go to our website at unrealfishtails.com to join. It's Unreal. Fish have tails. Do you have an Unreal Fishtail to share? Unreal Fishtails wants to post it. Go to unrealfishtails.com. Real is spelled with a double E. Join the club and win big money with your short videos. No matter what, you win with half price on all quality reels and rods. Plus, huge discounts and accessories. Perfect gift for anglers. Check out the website now at unrealfishtails.com. The road stretches for miles in front of you. And with the Ram 1500, you'll be able to reach mile after open mile. It gets a best-in-class 25 miles per gallon highway, so your destination won't just be determined by your gas gauge, but by your gauge for achievement. And the Ram 1500 is the first-ever back-to-back motor trend truck of the year. Guts. Glory. Ram. See your local Ram dealer today for great deals. EPA estimated 25 MPG highway based on V6 4x2. A full-service fly shop, his and her fly fishing, offers FFI certified international fly fishing instructor and guide service with Frank Selby. Listen to Frank as host of FishHuntTalkRadio.com or listen live Saturdays on Sirius XM Radio Channel 211. Custom flies are handmade to, to your order in-house in Newport Beach. Fishing in Mexico, Belize, Florida, or the Rockies, Frank and the staff will deliver exactly what you need. Flies and gear. Google his and her fly fishing. Alaskan RV Butler. Guiding, fishing, hiking, sightseeing, adventure. The Alaskan RV Butler. Like a cruise on wheels in the comfort of an RV, view the wonders of Alaskan interior, streams, ocean, and wildlife. Or fish for the big one, all while pampered by Mike, the Alaskan RV Butler. Mike's inclusive tours serve butter-drenched shellfish and mouth-watering steaks. Mike is your personal chef, chauffeur, guide, and planner. And for the real Alaska, contact MikeRVButler at gmail.com. That's MikeRVButler at gmail.com. It's time for you to take a real fun adventure. Join a hosted fishing adventure to Alaska or Baja with the staff of Fish Talk Radio. Real fun adventures can book you on any adventure you desire. Bring your fishing friends or meet new ones. Fish Talk Radio gets the best deals from our sponsors to give you the best possible price. Real fun trips are inclusive, easy, no worry packages to the most popular fish grounds. Trips start around $600. Go to reelfunadventures.com. Welcome back to Fish Talk Hunt Radio with John Hennigan. And, of course, our host, Frank Selby, uh, the premier uh, fly fishing angler. Probably the best that I know. He may not be the best in the world, but uh, when he goes after something, he usually gets it. Yeah. And so does Bill. Every time he goes out surf fishing, I have never heard one bad thing about you, Bill. Oh, thank you. And, and I think well, you're one of the nicest fishermen I know that we see each other a couple shows every year. And we have a lot of fun at the shows. Uh, uh, you know, if you don't mind, I've got a question for you. Sure. And it has to do with techniques of surf fishing. Uh, you know, the first thing you want to do, of course, is walk out as far as you can and throw the lure as far as you can, right? Wrong. Well, that, no. was, the technique, that was the technique we always used to use. We yeah. used to be under the impression 
that if I used a four, you know a 12 or a 14 foot Calcutta and a four ounce sinker, and I could cast that thing out as far into the ocean, you know, like out toward the barge on the other side of the breaker, yeah, could, yeah, throw it. That that's where the big fish were, and it really was years before we realized. And and personally, you know, I noticed it from surfing, and I noticed it from diving that all of the fish, at least the the, the greater percentage of fish, ninety percent of the fish. We're all within about fifty to seventy-five feet of the dry sand. Well, they're very, they're, very, very they're swimming. Before. They're swimming between your legs. Yeah. Exactly, and sometimes they're behind you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I be have caught out in Corvina between my feet fishing for them. Just slam my feet shut just to show so somebody. That's, say, that was that's one of the tips is you, you know, when you're surf fishing, there's a lot of fish in the surf. You don't know it, but you don't see them. They're not jumping, but they're there. And, you know, just because you can throw it a long ways doesn't mean that's where the fish are. Well, well that's I exactly have, right. And, it, um, and I can't tell you how many surfers over the years have come in and said to me, are, are there fish here? And, we, you know, we will have caught dozens, if not hundreds of fish, right where they're surfing. And, and it's so very difficult to see them. But they're yeah. all in very close because that's where they can hide. And that's where yeah. all the food is. Yeah, they usually about, uh, my favorite time to fish is about an hour after low tide when the, all the holes start filling up and the bait fish get in it, the halibut grab it, the bar perch. I like the little Corbina Highway that we used to step in going out on our Gordy boards and go up to almost to our waist or above that, thinking it was only going to be a few inches straight across. Go into that whole gully and come right back up freezing. <laughs> that's what you have to tease me about. Well, that. do you have any other have any other tips on uh, surf fishing? Well, you know, just there's 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 a few things just really easily easy to keep in mind. Beaches, the shape of beaches change all the time, particularly after big storms. So if you have a favorite beach that you like to go surf fishing at, look at your tide chart, find out when the lowest possible tide is, and walk along the beach and look at the topography. Find the areas where there's holes or there's rocks or there's troughs and line those up with something on shore and then come back when they're covered with water because you can almost always be sure that wherever there's a depression, in the sand, there's going to be fish too. So pay attention. Go down there at low tide if you can. Figure out where things are and line them up. And, and, and then, like Frank said, you know, a lot of times surf fishing is very good an hour after low tide up to high tide because every single wave that comes in pushes the water and the tide up farther along with a fish as they're looking for food. So they're really coming uh-huh. right to you. Hey, yeah. John, I'm going to tell you something. You're not going to believe it. I guarantee you. If Bill just took the bar perch he's caught, he could probably put him end to end and go halfway from the beach all the way halfway around Catalina Island. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, the other thing I mentioned real quick, uh, surf fishing, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not that good. I've I done some. But you know, there's a you know a couple of things. You take a little uh, uh, plastic and and break, you know, just put a little, take a little piece off, and use that. But by far and away, the best bait I believe are sand crabs, and they're right there next to you. They they really are, and and you know, sand crabs are are prevalent all over the world. I I found them in Fiji, Hawaii, the Marshall Islands, uh, East Cape. Of Mexico, California, Washington, Oregon, all, they're all, they're all over the yeah, world. Yeah, really, you just see a little, uh, like a little bubble in the sand, and the, you start digging. Yeah. But those things will dig too. You know, you you know they don't stay there waiting for you. That's right. I mean, luckily they're looking out to sea at all times, so they can't see you coming. If they're looking the other way, you'd never oh. catch them. But um, but yeah, they they accumulate in groups and in beds. You normally find beds early in the season, so in May or April, adjacent to piers and rocks and places where there's structure. And then as the summer goes on and the water warms up all around the world, 
they spread out on the beach. But you'll find basically three different varieties. There's a variety that occurs from um, above San Bap Pismo Beach to Seattle, which is a very hard shell, and they, they uh, come to the surface at all water temperatures. So they really exist in, 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 in the 50s, really. Um, they'll do fine. And then from Santa Barbara to, um, gosh, about Cedros Island, about halfway down Baja, roughly, you'll find the common sand crabs that are found on, on the West Coast. Um, and you'll find these the same ones on the East Coast when you're in South Carolina and North Carolina that come to the surface when the water's about 60 degrees and begin to lose their shell. And then when you go into really tropical climates, when you go to Hawaii and you go to the East Cape and you go to uh, Guam and Fiji, you'll find them there too in much smaller numbers. They look almost exactly the same, except for instead of being a gray color, they're almost white with little gray spots, and their legs are about twice as long. And But you're really, like I said, you'll find them all over the world. Mm -hmm. And you just stick a – is there any, any way to hook them? You just stick it through? You know, the best way to hook them is so the skinny end of a sand crab is its head – which looks like its tail, but that's its head. The fatter end is its tail. You put the hook all the way through its head so the eye of the hook is laying really on top of its back on that skinnier end, and you turn the hook around, you just push it through the crab, so it almost cradles the bottom of the crab, and that's the most efficient way to hook them because if you hook them any other way, what will happen is they'll spin. They'll spin on your leader, and there's not oh. a single big you know, surface that got big by eating something that they weren't familiar with. So you yeah. want to make it look as natural as possible. But yeah, and what about you know, fishing you in general? Uh, is, it, is it like bat fishing? Or, excuse me, bass fishing, where if you feel anything, you <laughs> slam, set the hook, or do you yeah. let them eat it a little bit and let them run? That's exactly what it's like because, you know, the, the thing with surfish, almost all surfish, and really a lot in tropical climates also, what they do is they inhale their food, they crush it in their throat, they spit the pieces out, and they eat the individual pieces. So, so if it was like you and me, we would take a bite, we would chew on, you know, a piece of steak, we take a bite, we chew on it, and we swallow it. That would be like the way a tuna eats. The way that surface eat is they inhale, they crush it because their teeth are small, and then they spit it out and eat the individual pieces. So the second you feel a tug on your line, you want to reel down and lift your rod up immediately. It, it's yeah. like a trout or other fish where you're waiting for it to bite a few times. And you yeah, you don't you don't rip it out of its mouth, but you just uh, tighten the line and lift your rod. Exactly. So you don't need to pull your rod like you're setting the hook. All you need to do is have a, 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 a um, light action rod, a parabolic style rod that bends really easily. And as long as you're fairly tight to your sinker, as soon as you have a bite, if you just reel down and just lift the rod up, eight out of ten times you'll have the fish. If you don't, because the water's so turbid and so murky, many times you just let it drop right back to the bottom again, they'll come right back to it. Hmm. I, I would say one of the biggest mistakes surf anglers make is either having slack in their line where they can't feel any bite. Because yeah. remember, in the surf, it's not like we're on a boat or a pier where we're over the fish. We're, we're, we're parallel, basically, with the fish. It's like flying a kite. So we need to be tight to our sinker because if we're not, we have any slack, we won't feel any bite. Yeah, so, you just got a big loop. And when you're setting exactly. the hook, all you're doing is taking a loop out. Exactly, where it's like if you and I are on the boat and we're um, uh, bottom fishing for, for rockfish, we're straight down to our sinker, and we can feel anything touch our line. Whereas in the surf, because it, there's a big rake in it, there's, there's the, the extra line, you have to be tight to your sinker. But like I said, the second you feel a bite or something, a tap or something, pull down on it, just reel down and lift up, and, and you'll have a good chance of having a fish. Well, we talked about Corbina. Perch, uh, what are some of the favorite uh, surf fishes? You know, in, in uh, of course, in, in uh, Baja, it's rooster fish. But uh, right. what in you know, Southern California or California or the West Coast? What, or I guess it can, applies to the East Coast too. We've got a lot of listeners back there. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've got any tips on East Coast uh, uh, surf fishing. 
What will I do? You know, there's a lot of people on the East Coast that don't know that one of their favorite fish, the drum and the drum family, are cousins are, okay. to all again? of the spot fin and yellowfin croaker on the West Coast. They're, they're probably the from the same family. Um, so people who fish for redfish in, in Louisiana, um, black drum in South and North Carolina, Florida, um, anywhere around Corpus Christi, they all can use this light line technique. And really many of the same techniques that we have even some of the same baits that we use are the baits that they use for drum on the East Coast. All right, all right. Yeah. Let's hold it there for now, Bill. We're, we're going to bring you back. That's uh, Bill Varney, fishthesurf.com, and this is Fish Hunt Talk. We'll be right back. Drop them down. Let them go. Chicken them up. Yeah, chicken them up. We have something new and exciting for all fishermen and fisherwomen, from 5 to 12 year old boys and girls to teenagers and adults. Join the Unreal Fish Sales Fresh and Saltwater Fishing Club to get an amazing 50% discount on all Unreal rods and reels, 40% discount on all apparel, and 30% discount on all Unreal mounts. This monthly Fresh and Saltwater video contest has a cash prize up to $2,500. Members who join our Unreal Fish Sales Club anytime this holiday season will receive a free Unreal Fish Sales shirt or hat of their choice. Go to our website at unrealfishtails.com to join. It's Unreal. Fish have tails. Do you have an Unreal Fish Tail to share? Unreal Fish Tails wants to post it. Go to unrealfishtails.com. Real is spelled with a double E. Join the club and win big money with your short videos. No matter what, you win with half price on all quality reels and rods, plus huge discounts and accessories. Perfect gift for anglers. Check out the website now at unrealfishtails.com. A full-service fly shop. His and her fly fishing offers FFI certified international fly fishing instructor and guide service with Frank Selby. Listen to Frank as host of fishhunttalkradio.com or listen live Saturdays on Sirius XM Radio Channel 211. Custom flies are handmade to, to your order in-house in Newport Beach. Fishing in Mexico, Belize, Florida, or the Rockies, Frank and the staff will deliver exactly what you need. Flies and gear. Google his and her fly fishing. It's time for you to take a real fun adventure. Join a hosted fishing adventure to Alaska or Baja with the staff of Fish Talk Radio. Real fun adventures can book you on any adventure you desire. Bring your fishing friends or meet new ones. Fish Talk Radio gets the best deals from our sponsors to give you the best possible price. Real fun trips are inclusive, easy, no-worry packages to the most popular fish grounds. Trips start around $600. Go to reelfunadventures.com. If you are still using a plastic hard shell cooler, things have changed for the better. AO coolers are lighter with twice the efficiency of the traditional bulky coolers. AO coolers are the best available soft-sided cooler with three-quarter inch high-density closed cell foam insulation. They will keep ice frozen for 24 hours in hot weather. Easy to carry, less space, it fits product inside for better performance. Go to aocoolers.com to order or find a retailer available at West Marine. Used by fishermen who know where to get the best fishing gear around, AFTCO makes the highest quality fishing rod components worldwide. If it says AFTCO, you know you have a quality rod. Guy Harvey Clothing, the best outdoor clothing line anywhere, is also available through AFTCO. Longest lasting, functional, and best looking clothing you'll be proud to wear. Only the very best materials and workmanship. As soon as you put it on, you'll know the difference. Look for AFTCO at quality retailers or go to AFTCO.com. Welcome back to Fish Talk Hunt Radio with John Hennigan. This is John Hennigan. And, of course, our special host, Frank Selby. And he's got a special guest. Frank, who do we have? We have Bill Varney. And he is one of my friends that I love to fish with or talk to him. We always pick our, each other's brains to find out if we know a little bit more than the other guy. But, <laughs> Bill, you got a couple more things you wanted to talk about. Let's talk about them. Quickly. 
Okay. Well, I, I think just real real quick overview of a couple of things to keep in mind when it go, comes to surf fishing is that um, it's a great family sport. I mean, that that's one of the things that's so attractive about fishing itself is that it attracts so many families. It's in, it's an inexpensive sport, easy to do. Surf fishing in particular, you don't need to spend a whole day. It's not like a round of golf. You can go down there for an hour or two and have a great time. And most people, when they're surf fishing, when they begin to get out there for the first time, the best thing to do is just look in your garage for your longest trout rod, match it up with a small spinning reel around a 2,500 or a 3,000 size spinning reel with six pound monofilament, and you're ready to go. That's all you really need. That and a light. Well, six pounds. Ready to get out there. Hmm. Exactly. Six pound test. So we fish six pound tests primarily. Um, I would say, you know, from the Mexican border north on the west coast, and then in different places in the south, like down in Louisiana, when we're redfish fishing, we'll use very light tests down there, which works fine. Most of that line, it breaks at about 12 pounds, so it's much stronger than you think, and as long as you change it often, it's going to be very strong. Uh, you know, that's a good tip, but just remind me of something. We don't have much time. Uh, but talking about line, in particular mono, um, how it's stored makes a difference. And yes, it does uh, not get better with age, but you <laughs> just make sure you want to keep it out of the sun. Exactly. You want to keep it in a dark place. I keep it in a dark place at all time inside of a paper bag a lot of times. And it's also smart if you can do it not to keep it in your garage, not to keep it anywhere where there's going to be carbon monoxide because carbon monoxide breaks down oh. both rubbers and plastics. So oh. you really want to keep that away from there. A lot of times, you know, we'll keep it in our closet, in our bedroom, in a brown paper bag type of, type of thing. Um, one, one last thing on that, we have a couple seconds left here, is that most surf anglers prefer fishing monofilament when we're having a, uh, using spinning gear. And the reason for that is with, that we want to have stretch in a line. Any time that we don't have stretch, like when we use straight braided line or too short of a top shot on it, the line doesn't stretch at all. And if we're bringing in uh, big fish through the surf, their mouths are very soft and the hook will pull out of their mouth. So we prefer to have, like I said before, a limber rod and a good drag and then have monofilament line where we know that we've got some stretch in it. Good, perfect. Good. Uh, well, John, you got one more question to ask him. Uh, well, no, Frank, we're gonna we're gonna have to get out of here. Uh, but I don't know if we've got any announcements. We're gonna come in next week. One of the things we want to mention is that we're starting to put together our uh, uh, real fun trips, hosted trips, and we need to know where to book them. We need people to contact us. For the amount of listeners that we have out there, we're not getting a lot of feedback. There's got to be areas that you'd like you'd be interested in learning more about. Well, how do, how do they get hold so of you, John? Frank mentioned Mongolia. How do they get hold of you? Yeah, well, they need it's, to it's really email easy. either it's, one of us, John or me. Yeah, yeah just go, go, go to the website. Go to, go, go to the website. It's easy. Go to fishtalkhunt.com, uh, and you can find me easy. Email address is you just go to fishtalkradio.com. John at fishtalkradio.com. All right, that's simple enough. John at fishtalkradio.com, and this is Fish Talk Radio. We'll be back with you next week. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you to Bill. Thank you to Josh. Thank you to Frank and John. We'll talk to you later.